Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be discussing the 11th problem from the CP31 sheet by TLE eliminators under the 900 rated questions. Let's go. So move down to my sheet, ticked off 900 and 11th problem not dividing. Let's open this up. So you are given an array n of n positive integers a1, a2, so on till an. In one operation you can choose any number of the array and add 1 to it. Make at most two into n operations so that the array satisfies the following property that a i of uh, sorry a of i plus one is not divisible by a i for each i from one to n minus one. Okay, so you do not need to minimize the number of operations. All right, so let us try to generalize this problem. Very very simple. They are saying that you will be of course given some basic variables. The variable n is there. That is the size of the array. And you're of course talking about an array itself. So I'll call this array A and then you have the numbers A1, A2, A3, A4, so on, so on till An. Okay, now you have the power to perform an operation. That operation is basically take up any random number you feel in this array and increment it by one. So maybe I'll take up A3, I'll increment it by one. This becomes A3 plus one, so on, so on, so on. So this is sort of an operation that increment any number by yeah by one so this is the power or this is the operation that is given to you you have to perform at most two into n such operations so n is the size of the array basically means twice the size of the array is the limit on this operations now remember you don't need to minimize these operations as in if let's say n is three that means two into n is six so you might perform four operations, you might perform three operations, you might perform no operations, it's totally up to you. There is no limit on how many operations you actually perform, it's just that we don't want to go above six operations or generalized way, we don't want to go above two into an operations. So this is given. And what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve something like this, that when the final array has been fully operated on, every adjacent number pair, we have this relation to be followed that a of i plus one should not be divisible by a of i for i equals to one to n minus one by n minus one because n uh, like because we are taking i plus one as the position so n minus one if you put i uh, as uh, n minus one, you will get n minus one plus one, that is n. So since we have a one based indexing in this, like for the problem, so we understand that, okay, that is the last place we want to go. Just basically simply, just take adjacent element positions and follow this relation. The next number should not be divisible by its previous number and this should be followed. So you have to make that sure that this array finally looks like this. Nowhere is this the case that the next number is actually divisible by, it should not be divisible by its previous number. Do this by you making use of these operations, perform maximum two into n operations. And now what is asked to be printed? If you think that you have actually successfully done this thing, print the array. So they are saying that if we, uh, we can show that an answer always exists and if there are multiple answers we have to print, what do we have to actually print? The resulting array after applying at most two n operations. So perform these operations, whatever is the final values of a1 to a n, print that as an array. And then of course the, program will automatically check if that's correct or not. And if that is correct, you will pass and you will get an accepted solution. Okay, great. So let us do something. Let us look at the test cases. So you have two, four, three, and six, let's say two, four, three, and six. Now, since N is four, that means I have allowed maximum eight operations to be performed. So what I can do is I can like, uh, they have given you a very good explanation. You can make this array to look like four, five, six, seven. So it looks like four, five, six, and seven, for which of course you would have formed two operations over here, one operation over here, three operations over here, and actually one operation over here. Total, you would have performed seven operations. Now, because seven is less than eight, it's less than equal to eight. So you know you are good to go. At most, seven op at most eight operations have been performed. And of course, in this array, you can check that, if let's say I talk about this position five, is five divisible by its previous number four? No, it is not. It's number six, is it divisible by its previous position five? No. Number seven, is it divisible by its previous position six? No. So everywhere this condition is followed, that means this is a good answer. I can print four, five, six, seven, and I'll be good to go. Hence, I know that this is particularly correct. That is why they have given this as an output. Now, of course, the argument is there can be some 
different answer to this there can be of course multiple answers it's totally up to you how do you create such a logic that you're able to come up with the correct answer every time okay great i think we have understood the problem now let us actually discuss the expected time complexity in this problem all right so i know that one second allows me 10 power 8 elementary operations and since in this problem i have been given time limit per test as two seconds that means one test is basically telling me perform 2 into 10 raised to 8 elementary operations and now i know that every test might have some test cases that is given this given with this variable t that is actually in 10 raised to 4 order all right so if i ask you what's the number of operations you can perform for every test case then this sort of changes this becomes 2 into 10 raised to 8 upon 10 raised to 4 which is 2 into 10 raised to 4 number of operations so basically this is the number of operations you can perform on an average for every test case although we have a very simple line over here that the sum of n overall test cases don't exceed uh, to 5 into 10 raised to 4 order so we can also compare with the actual uh, test uh, variable over here that is 2 into 10 raised to 8 operations so i can understand now that since n is given in 10 raised to 4 order all right 10 raised to 4 order do I have the capability to create an O of n solution? Of course I have. If I want to create an O of n square solution, that would be a problem because I would be going somewhere in like 10 raised to 8 complexities. And I don't want that because I'm somewhere looking in per test case complexity of 10 raised to 4. So it's safer that we create some solution that it's in like O of n. So maybe if you want to go above this, we can create a solution that looks like log base to n. Maybe that's good to go. Yeah. But O of n square and above will be a problem. So all these time complexities are good to go. That is from log base to n sort of to you create a constant time complexity. Great. But above that, it's a problem. And this is actually an expected time complexity discussion because now I have a general idea of what sort of a solution am I looking at. I can, of course, like in this case, create a solution that runs in preferably O of n order or below because that is what is expected. Okay. Great. So now actually let us discuss the idea in this problem. Now this problem itself is a very sort of a constructive based problem right because there are very acute observations which we can make and that's going to actually help us solve the problem as a whole so first of all a very simple observation in over here is that ai as a number if let's say ai plus one is currently divisible by ai and ai every number has the lowest possible range from one onwards that means if the number is one let's say let's say you are talking about a number ai being equal to one then one has a very special property right it divides everything it one is this like every number is divisible by one so because of this part if i talk about the ai plus one number ai plus one number will whatever is this value whatever is this x value doesn't matter x will always like this x value will always be divisible by one that is a of i which means this gives me a hint first hint that any number currently in the array which looks like 1, which looks like 1, is a problem for me. Because 1 automatically will divide its succeeding number. So I know I will have to make a change there. This is like for short, even before starting on any further modification, I can understand that 1 is a problem. So 1 has to be changed. 1 should not be in my array. That means I can start with a very, uh, sort of a very simple idea in the... Uh, st uh, start of the solution that since one is a problem eliminate all ones this is observation number one now how do i eliminate all ones i have only been given the power to increment a number which means my logic would be simple if any ai right now is equal equal to one i'll just increment it so ai becomes ai plus plus now I know after I have run this logic for all numbers from 1 to n, I have basically made sure that every number, every AI number has gone greater than or equal to 2. Yes, I hope this is clear. Very simple common sense. Now, doing this, how many number of operations would I have taken? In worst case complexity, I can say that maybe all the numbers were 1, right? Maybe all n numbers initially in my array was 1. So you will take at most n operations, right, to do this because you will run this on the whole array and every array element needed a modification, needed an addition. So you have used up at most, in worst case, you have used up already n operations. Now out of 2n, you are left with n more operations to perform. And a condition has risen up that every AI number is greater than or equal to 2. Maximum operations you can still good to go, which are still performable are n. Okay. 
Now what do I think further? Very, very simple. All that I'm trying to do is go from left to right, left to right, and simply ask myself, is A of i, like is of A of i plus one rather, mod A of i equal equal to zero? Let's say this is not true. If this is not true, then you know that A of i plus one to be specific does not need any modification. You're great, great, good to go. So I know that the first number A zero can be kept as it is. And then I can start focusing on A of one and make a comparison with A zero. I can be like, okay, is A of one divisible by A zero? If it is not divisible by A zero, then it's great, good to go. Let's move on and focus our energy on the pair of A two and A one. I'll say, okay, with A two and A one, do the same condition and so on, so on, so on, so on. But as soon as I feel that yes, some modification is needed, I can just add one to this uh, number a of i plus one, and that is going to actually make sure that I am good to go. Why? I'll actually take this to a new page. So understand this. So like, let's say right now I've written that a of i plus one is actually divisible by a of i. That is why you did the modification. Now I am arguing that you would have changed this to a of i plus one plus one. So if you change this number a of i plus one to be a of i plus one plus one, I am sure that this number is not going to be divisible by a of i. Why? Understand this. Because if let's say a of i plus one was actually divisible by a of i, and and you think that a of i plus one plus one also is going to be divisible by a of i, that means you are trying to say that consecutive consecutive numbers are divisible by a of i, right? Why consecutive? Because basically the number is a of i plus one and a of i plus one plus one. So B, these two numbers are consecutive, right? Yes, these two numbers are consecutive. So if I say that both the numbers are divisible by a of i, then that is not going to be true because remember for this condition to be fulfilled, a of i has to be one because there is no other number besides one which satisfies this condition that consecutive numbers will be divisible by that number. Like if you talk about, let's say the number two, let's say the number three, four, five, so on, so on, so on. Consecutively, these numbers don't divide any set of numbers. Like if, if you talk about two, two will divide four. Assumably, let's say it, the next number it will divide will be six, then eight. It cannot divide consecutive numbers. The only number where you, where you think that it can be, like it can divide consecutive numbers is actually one. And this is not possible, why? because of the very simple logic that initially only after performing n operations pre-hand, we have actually made every number go greater than one that is greater than or equal to two. So a of i cannot be one. And since a of a i cannot be one, a of i plus one plus one as a number is automatically made sure that mod taking modulo with a of i is not going to be equal to zero. It's not going to be divisible. Hence, making this smart move that if I feel it's it a of i plus one is divisible, just incremented by one, will make sure that the current pair of i plus one and i has been handled. And then this can be propagated from left and right. So I check for zero, one, one, zero, two, uh, sorry, uh, one, two, two, three, three, four, so on, so on, so on pairs till the very last indexes n minus one, or you can say n minus two, n minus one indexes. And I will make sure that if I encounter such a problem, just increment it by one. And if I don't, let's just continue. And in worst case, now also you will at most perform n operations because it can happen that, okay, every a of i number, a of i plus one number needed a modification. So you would have performed n, my n operations max. So you performed n operations in the previous uh, sort of set of instructions that you did. And now also to execute this set of instructions, you perform at most n operations, which means totally you are only performing at most two n operations. And you are now sure that at most two n operations have been performed Plus your array has now gone in such a state where no consecutive elements have this condition of divisibility. A of i plus one is for short not divisible by A of i. So this is the logic, very constructive based logic, I should say, right? And uh, very, very uh, implementative, all right? So let us actually move on to our uh, code part and see how do we implement this out. Very, very simple. Just take the input of the test case, input of the n, input of the array, and then simply run a loop first. So this is basically performing the first set of operations, performing the first set of operations n operations basically. And then basically what are we doing in this? As we explained, if a of i is one, just increment it 
because we don't want that a of i any a of i remains one it should be at least two and then run this next set of operations which is a simple check go to every pair of i plus one and i if you feel that i plus one is correctly divisible by a of i make sure you increment it and that is by proof going to make sure that this new number a of i plus one plus one is not divisible by a of i because every number a i is greater than or equal to two so that condition is not going to be fulfilled and this is basically called performing the second set of operations and this is going to be maximum n minus one operations to be exact because we are running a loop from zero to less than n minus one so maximum is n minus one operation. So overall in an order of two n is the operations you perform. That is why you still satisfy the condition. There's no boundage on the actual number of operations. So that is also good to go. And you sure know that now you have achieved an array which is satisfying everything. Now you just print this array, simple for loop and you're good to go. What is the time complexity? You have an n order over here to take, uh, this is the input, this is the first set of operations, n order, this is Again, n order only, although you run this L minus one, but that's fine. And this is again, n order to print. So overall, very, very simple, easily observable. O of n is the order, which means O of, now we were looking in n raised to, like 10 raised to four. So we have 10 raised to four order being followed. What about space? Same thing, space is also in 10 raised to four order because all we need is a simple array to take the input of the numbers, nothing besides this. So a very, very fun problem and intuitive. Starts off with the first set of operations, then the second set of operations. It has this mathematics aspect involved to it where you actually understand that you don't, or you cannot divide consecutive elements uh, by a number which is not one. Only one does that. So since we have already made sure every number is greater than or equal to uh, two, that means doing this was the smart move and this is the total number of operations we took. All right, so I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.